Hi, it's Mark Russian of markrushin.com. It is Friday, November 13, 2020. Been looking forward to uh, today, I guess, for whatever reason. And uh, yeah. So what do I got planned for the show here? I've got a Ryobi unboxing. And then I got, I'm got. i going to show off some of the uh, tools that I use to help create my art. Not necessarily painting tools, but additional things that I use. And then I'm going to show off my uh, some additions to the 2020 picks by DJ Rushton Spotify public playlist that a whopping four people follow, but more people should because it's wonderful and it's curated by me. So I'm going to unbox this. I know it's in here. Uh, and then here's my the first favorite tool that I like. Are these little box cutters that you get them for next to nothing at the uh, at the hardware store? I also carry the big fellas here. And you get the adjustable, and then when they get old, you can just pop them off. I like those; those are good. Keep keep the blade down. All right, let's uh, get the old. There we go. Something for the cat here. It's about cat size. Oh, oh, I bought two things. I forgot. First thing I bought. Now, I'm a Ryobi guy. And I got this. This little, this wasn't even that much money. This was hardly anything. Probably because it's made in, where is it made? Made in Indonesia. Isabel brought this back. <laughs> Look at that. That's real nice. Savings, economies, a horror. But I needed some new drill bits for uh, my new drill. And that's what I got in here in the box. Of course, again, cat sized box. Throw that in there. She might not like that. All right. So, yeah, in the last year, I've become a Ryobi guy. I. Been a big fan of their expanded garden tools. So I have a Ryobi string trimmer, the electric string trimmer, 40, 40 volt. And then I have a brush cutter attachment because I got, you know, almost an acre and a half. Most of it is ravine and brushy stuff and uh, just stuff you need to cut down every year. And uh, keep things in line, keep that thorny rose out of the way. And, uh, and then... Uh, early this spring, I got rid of my, I, I had it for a long, long time. And I bought it used for like, like 40 or 50 bucks from a hippie. Actually, the dude looked like a hippie. It was great. He was, he was so nice too. And uh, it was a, a Black & Decker corded electric mower. And I our previous house had a quarter acre and I mowed, mowed it with that. Super cheap, no, almost no maintenance. And I ended up uh, giving that away to a friend. And so I bought a Ryobi uh, 40 volt mower because the, the, the yard here is not that big. It takes about 10 minutes to mow. So I just slipped the old big battery in there and that'll, that'll, uh, I can mow it three times before the charge is out. So it's super easy. And those things are incredibly light, easy to use. Uh, they're great. There's, even if I had like a normal size lawn just with a couple of batteries, I, I would have no problem mowing it and it handles it very, very well. And I, there's no reason to have, unless you have like a huge estate or something like that, there's no reason to have a, um, a, a gas powered lawnmower or even a corded electric, which, you know, it's, I, I didn't realize what a kind of a hassle they were. I never ran over the, 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 extension cord or anything like that in all my years of, of operating them. But, um, uh, having the battery, it's, it's, it's nice. It's nice. I would encourage anybody thinking about getting a mower for just a normal sized, you know, suburban lawn or, uh, uh, anywhere up to a quarter acre. I think if you had two big batteries, you could probably do half an acre with, without any problem. Of course you get up to about half an acre and then you might want a rider and, the uh, battery-powered riding lawnmowers are kind of expensive, but 
But um, yeah, for most people, you don't need that. And it's the same thing with uh, uh, string trimmers. You know, those use those little two cycles with the uh, gas oil mixture and they stink and they're loud. <laughs> you don't need them. And then uh, a few months ago, a couple months ago, I bought for the expanded, I bought the air mover, which is like a, like a leaf blower. But this thing is actually uh, pretty quiet. It's a lot quieter than those typical uh, hair dryers that you see people uh, blowing stuff around. This, is, this thing's pretty powerful. It'll, it'll move rocks. And so um, <laughs> it'll move rocks on my rock driveway. So uh, it moves everything else uh, with a plumb. A-P-L-O-M-B. Uh, so I, I, I've become a big fan of Ryobi here. Look at the big Ryobi commercial in the first four or five minutes here. So let's take a look at what we got in the box. And the great thing about, well, oh, there's the little battery right there. <coughs> and the little uh, cordless drill. I got my drill bits, got my pencil. Give me something to ride on. Oh, here's the battery. That must be the charger. And this was like 50 bucks. Nothing special. Ordered it, had it in two days. Yeah, that's the battery right there. 18 volt battery. So these aren't compatible with my... Uh, string trim or anything like that, but you know, same company. And you can't miss that when you, when you lay it down somewhere. Now this replaces, interestingly enough, a black and Decker corded drill that I've had for a long, long time. And I'll probably give this away just because it, it's heavy. You compare the weight between the two. This thing's much lighter. I think even with the battery, stick the battery on there. Maybe about the same. No, no, this thing's bulkier. This orange thing is bulkier, but yeah, just having to, I, every time you got to get like an extension cord and I was just like, ah, eh. it'll be nice. It'd be nice to have this. Here we go. That and that right there. I think this was like eight bucks. So the, the whole thing was like 60, low 60s with tax. And just, it's going to make things a lot easier. Because when I'm putting things together, taking things apart with the uh, the paintings, you know, I'm always hanging like a D-ring hardware on the back, drilling things. I got, the, I got the window shade open today. The sun's going down like a big bald head. All right. Look at all this here. I've left all this up needlessly. Could have just had uh, nothing but me in the, the messy background here. So let's go over the uh, tools that I use, some of the tools that I use here, because I was like pulling it out. What am I going to talk about today? I don't really want to talk about a painting. I don't want to talk about an artist. Let's talk about some of the tools I use. I love these. And they, I, they don't make them anymore. They make them in a different size now. It's the Wallaby Aussie Greek Vanilla Bean Yogurt Containers. It's a little plastic. So, you know, they're reusable. This is great stuff, too. <laughs> I really like the, the Wallaby. And I really love the, uh, what's it, the, the goat milk yogurt. I'm a big probiotics guy. I quit, quit eating ice cream. Now I just have, uh, like, mostly Greek yogurt. Stuff like this. So these make great little containers for water, mixing paint, things like that. I just get piles of them around here. So they, yeah, they don't make them anymore. So I got to deal with that. I always have a collection of duct tape for whatever purpose. Yeah, this kind of goes with that, kind of. Is that Ryobi green? I boy, it sure is. I also have some new duct tape that is it's black duct tape and it's like it's just the nicest duct tape ever. It's not like like this stuff can be pretty gamey, you know? And the the 
the black duct tape I got, it's just like beautiful fabric it looks wonderful i'll show that sometime ah i don't have the box for it but uh nitrile gloves i don't use latex and i don't use uh or vinyl I, it's, it's don't like them so if i'm doing something that involves like sometimes i will paint if i'm painting with uh, acrylic inks <laughs> I will, uh, I'll put these on just so that I, my hands don't get all stuff all over them. I've got two, actually got two bins here. Uh, let's go, let's go, let's go. I had some of this for a while. This is, uh, it's like a one-sided tape, um, but it's made out of Tyvek. It's Tyvek tape. So whenever I have to um, tape down uh, paintings that are done on Tyvek to, uh, we'll say, uh, like a, a mat board, I don't want to use a typical uh, type of tape because you don't know what is, you don't know what is in that tape. And the Tyvek cannot handle any sort of solvent based materials. So if you buy Tyvek tape, you know that you can adhere that Tyvek to that. Uh, I haven't had any problems so far, but typically when you, when you uh, tape something down to the back of a, uh, of a mat board, you're not going to have that showing or that section that that will be above that will be behind all the mat board, but just, you know, be careful. Took me forever to find one of these. It's a small hammer. It's a small seven ounce hammer. Cause every time you go into a hardware store and I wish this was actually a little bit smaller, just cut that part off there and just have that. So when I'm, Sometimes you have to nail something or whatever, pull nails out of something. I wanted a smaller hammer, seven ounce hammer that fit the bill. Finally, I don't know where I found that, but I was like, oh, that's, that's what I'm looking for. Always got to have a level. I've always thought about getting an electronic version of this. You know, one of these, but this, this does the job. I would maybe, you know, maybe one of these that have the, the level of the laser in it. That'd be kind of nice someday. These are super cheap. Brayer. This is for when I'm adhering uh, Tyvek to the cradled wood panels or uh, the hardboard Masonite panels let's just put that braid out hopefully it works fiskers for cutting i usually use this to cut tyvek on a on a on a one of those uh green cutting mats i mean you know my wife does sewing and uh she uses those but then i use that for for cutting Tyvek down to size. It does a nice job. It just what else have I got in here? These are old. And I don't know why I have this. This is this one's this one's terrible. It's probably because it's terrible. I don't have to use it that long. Just a just a basic pair of pliers. These are kind of gamey, but I guess if you buy something new, you can just kind of whatever. Corner braces, just in case. Tic Tacs. I'm a big, big fan of Tic Tacs. Fresh mints. They used to sell them in these, these little containers here. And you can still find these containers at places like Hobby Hobby Lobby has been still selling these, and according to Tic Tac, they don't 
they're not selling them in these containers. These are great containers because you just you pop open the lid. You can put your put screws in there. I've got uh, wall hangers in that one. I got D rings in there. Boys, got <laughs> this is always a mess. Picture hanging wire. And these little pads for the back of the painting, the back of the frame. I usually put them on the, the bottom corner sections at the bottom. Sometimes I do all four corners and uh, just to protect the wall. Super cheap. What else you got in here? Various pins. Oh, look at that. Charcoal. In a package. Not getting everything dirty. You know, this uh various types of scotch tape. This is a this is a double sided tape. Now you never know when you might need it. Oh, look at this. Oh god, I used to paint with these all the time. Just a little uh you know, palette knife. That's how I used to paint uh, when I painted on uh, when I painted on paper. I used a palette knife. Look at that scraping, scraping, reductive, a little reductive technique, and of course, a pair of scissors. Uh, I really like these. These picture hooks. This is ready nail. I think I got these at Blick. And. There's something I really like about them. Now, if you look at them, they, they're kind of, uh, let's get this in front of the, the gold, and they have like this little, I think, is that a foam piece that's there in between the two? And it's in that, it the nail is in, hold on here, the nail is in there, so it's like, let's see if we can do that. So it stays in there. It doesn't fall out like those other ones that you like to buy at the hardware store. And they don't really cost that much extra. You know, ook. O-O-K. Ready nail picture hooks. Like them. Like them a lot. Oh, what else do we got? I'm just rambling today. Oh. Multi-use labels. Never know. You never know. All right. What do we got in here? Again, more duct tape. Uh, Bob Burridge. Get a thesaurus. Just in case you need uh, help with titles. Unfortunately, uh, I also need a pair of glasses because... <laughs> can barely see that anymore even with my glasses i'm just like dear god i'm old stud finder what's this good to have extra batteries too you never know you never know when you might need the stud finder uh, I electrical tape Sometimes that's better than uh, uh, Carpenter Square. You never think you need one. Now who's calling? Who is calling? Oh, just a second here. Hello? Please contact the pharmacy. I'll head over there right after this. Uh, yeah, um, Carpenter Square has saved me many times. It's the square. Sometimes you put things together. You can't tell if they're square or not. You know? What can I say? All right. And, of course, assortment. 
pens. <laughs> Assortment of pens, pencils, and probably one of the most important things, Sharpies. Sharpies galore here. Different types of pencils. All right. And of course, organized. Somewhat organized. All my junk. Everything falling out here. You never know. You never know when you might need something. Okay. So that those are some of the art tools that I use that are just like, you know, in drawers right by right by my art table. And of course, paper towels galore. Galore. <laughs> Viva, not the soft ones. Think of the rough ones. Those are the best. All right. 21 minutes. So let's um, let's head back over here to uh, everything else. Of course, you know my website. That's in the I'm putting that in the description now. And my eBay art store where all my paintings are, at least the ones on eBay. And of course, more about me and my music services. If you're interested in licensing or getting a, using a sample, I have information on how to do that on my website. All right. So the last thing today is my playlist, which is followed by a whopping four people. I'm so influential. 2020 picks by DJ Rushton. If I had a radio show in 2020, I'd be playing these new or new to me tracks. And in the past week here, I have added two tracks, Blocked and Wired by Daniel Diaz. That is excellent. This, he, uh, he lives in Paris. I think he's originally from Argentina. And he releases music like every week, almost every week. It's amazing. And uh, um, so this is like a little bit different. Like he... Sometimes he's kind of jazz oriented. Sometimes he's a little electronic. Sometimes he's um, a little ambient ish. This is more of an electronic piece, but it is just thoughtful and well crafted. In addition, William Bazinski, for whom the bell tolls from his new album, Lamentations. Of course, if you read. I don't read music reviews anymore. I know that that's out that because that, that was in my release release radar playlist. But uh, you know, you just read r music reviews are just unreadable. So I just I will check sites just to see what's been released, but I never read the reviews because they just go on and on and on and on. It's just like a history and a morality lesson and a and then just judgmental crap or it's uh minutia picking the lint out of your belly button sort of and it goes on and on and on <laughs> and i mean that for all music reviews these days you know it's it's changed so much over the years um, but that's another topic that's another topic i just i it's it music criticism crit, reviewing it's not even reviewing anymore it's it's something else bizarre it's like a bizarre cult <laughs> so i never sent anything out to be reviewed and i could and if anybody ever reviewed my i could care less i could care less what you think <laughs> reviewers I'm kind of curious what they get paid. You know, they always complain, like the music re reviewers, they're always complaining about like streaming services and everything like that. I'm like, what, what do they get paid for a review? I'm kind of curious. There's so many of them. <laughs> that's, that's me jabbing them. <clears throat> Thank God I don't know any. <laughs> they write for all those, you know. There's actually, there are a few people who write um, music, um, stories and in-depth things and sometimes a few reviews there's a couple people still out there that that i i think are um still very very good but it's 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 almost a ghost town it's any of these sites out there any of the major sites out there it's just it's 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 impossible and, it, and it's becoming more well it's always been 
All right, I'm rambling here. I'm past 25 minutes. It is time to let it go for Friday here. So it's uh, Friday, November 13th, Friday the 13th in 2020. What could possibly go wrong? I don't know. I'm heading up to the uh, the grocery store to pick up a prescription. And uh, uh, hopefully I, I, I make it back alive or I don't end up in jail. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching.